Welcome to the European Parliamentary Research Service podcasts. In this podcast, we'll talk about the potential of renewable hydrogen to decarbonize industry and heavy duty transport and help the EU achieve its climate objectives, especially now that the European Commission has clarified the conditions for hydrogen to be certified as renewable. Want to know more? Stay with us. Long heralded as an alternative to fossil fuels, renewable hydrogen is increasingly being pitched as the means to enable Europe's green revolution and help decarbonize sectors where other alternatives are either unfeasible or more costly. It can be used to replace fossil fuel for transport and industrial processes like fertilizer production and steelmaking, but also to make synthetic fuels, for example, for aviation. Such hydrogen-based fuels are called renewable fuels of non-biological origin. But what exactly is renewable hydrogen? First of all, it's important to clarify that hydrogen is an energy carrier and not itself a source of renewable energy. The fuel, which can be produced in a variety of ways, has been classified in colour codes depending on the method used. So it's considered green or renewable if it's produced with electricity from renewable sources to split water into hydrogen and oxygen. Grey if it's produced by the reaction of natural gas with steam and can turn into blue hydrogen if the resulting carbon emissions are captured and stored underground. In 2022, hydrogen accounted for less than 2% of Europe's energy consumption and was used mainly to produce chemical products such as plastics and fertilisers and 96% of this hydrogen was produced with natural gas, causing high carbon emissions. But as demand for climate-friendly solutions increases, the European Commission is determined to give renewable hydrogen a head start in the race. So, what is the EU doing to stimulate this market's development? Well, through the Repower EU plan, the EU has set itself the target of producing 10 million tonnes of renewable hydrogen by 2030, matched by the same amount in imports and of doubling the number of hydrogen valleys in the EU. Here's Gregor Erbach from the European Parliamentary Research Service. The EU will need huge amounts of renewable electricity to make that much renewable hydrogen, around 500 terawatt hours by 2030. That's almost half of today's renewable electricity. That comes on top of fast-growing demand for renewable electricity to replace coal and to power heat pumps and electric vehicles. These big plans for renewable hydrogen are underpinned by several EU initiatives, such as the Hydrogen Strategy, the Green Deal Industrial Plan and the Fit for 55 package. The EU also supports initiatives such as the European Clean Hydrogen Alliance, which promotes the large-scale deployment of clean hydrogen technologies by 2030, and important projects of common European interest to further develop the sector. Now, to help finance all this, the EU is making money available through Repower EU, the Recovery and Resilience Facility, or the recently proposed Hydrogen Bank, backed by €800 million Euros from the Innovation Fund, Here's Commission Vice President Franz Timmermans. We need to build up hydrogen value chains and close the investment gap. Right now, only 10% of hydrogen projects have reached a final investment decision. This is mainly sort of a chicken and egg situation because potential users of renewable hydrogen are waiting with their investments because they don't know that they will have the hydrogen available by the producers of hydrogen by the time they need it. And producers are waiting because they want to be sure to have offset once they produce it. So we have to sort of of mitigate uh, the risk here. The hydrogen bank will help to bridge this gap. But to scale up production of renewable hydrogen and avoid a situation where we're cannibalizing existing renewables capacity and diverting it away from other uses, it's important to ensure additional electricity production capacity as well as defining the conditions under which hydrogen can be considered renewable and thus fully contribute to the Fit for 55 and Repower EU objectives. 
To this end, in February 2023, the European Commission adopted two long-awaited delegated acts within the Renewable Energy Directive, one defining rules on renewable hydrogen production and clarifying the additionality criteria for renewable electricity, and another setting out a methodology to calculate life-cycle greenhouse gas emission savings from renewable fuels of non-biological origin. So, what will change? Stay with us. Well, the new rules will ensure that hydrogen and associated fuels are only counted as renewable if they are produced from renewable electricity. Moreover, they will need to be produced using additional renewable electricity generated at the same time and in the same area as their own production. Here's Gregor Erbach. We need to avoid a situation where our electricity must be generated from coal or gas because all the renewable electricity is already used for hydrogen. That's why hydrogen needs additional electricity capacity. And that electricity must be generated at the same time and in the same geographical region where it is used to make renewable hydrogen. The rules will be phased in gradually and become more stringent over time as renewable hydrogen production is scaled up. They will apply to both domestic producers and producers from third countries that want to export renewable hydrogen to the EU to count towards the EU renewables targets. Now, the second delegated act establishes a method to calculate greenhouse gas emission savings from green hydrogen and its associated fuels, which can contain carbon, taking into account the full life cycle. To count toward member states' renewable energy targets, the emission savings must be more than 70% compared with fossil fuels. So, how have these two delegated acts been received by stakeholders? Well, in general, industry welcomes the clarity the new rules bring, but warns against the increased costs that will come with stricter rules. Here's Jorgo Chatsimarkakis, CEO of Hydrogen Europe. The delegated acts give us a legal basis. This is the good part. The bad part is that we are the only sector needing to prove additionality on an hourly basis. So we are somehow discriminated. We are wearing the green jacket that we now have with pride, but to be honest, it's a straight jacket. Truth is, not everyone is excited about the stimulus to the hydrogen market. Environmental organisations warn the texts leave too much space for greenwashing, with a risk of increased emissions due to hydrogen production. We spoke to Fausto Zaccaro from climate policy think tank Sandbag. Renewable hydrogen is only as green as its impact on electricity generation. The relaxed rules adopted by the Commission could lead to electrolysers drawing too much energy from the grid so that thermal power would have to fill the gap increasing reliance on fossil fuels and carbon emissions. Meanwhile, the full potential of renewables would remain untapped, resulting in wasted electricity and increased costs for consumers. So, what's next? Well, for the European Parliament and the Council of the EU, it's either take it or leave it. They have until June this year to approve or reject the rules, but they cannot amend them. So we'll see what happens. They may not be the best of rules, but having in place clear criteria for renewable hydrogen is key for investments in the sector that help decarbonize the EU and reduce its dependence on imported and polluting fossil fuels. Want to know more? Check out Gregor Erbach's full policy brief on the EPRS website or in our app. This is a European Parliamentary Research Service podcast. Thanks for listening.